our judge. He's been involved in the dog world. Well, welcome to the first group judging of the evening here at Crufts, where we will decide who from the Terrier group will go through to best in show. And later on, the Hound group will be judged as well. Now, the Terriers have been the second most successful best in show winners over the years of Crufts. Uh, two best in show contenders have already been decided yesterday. Uh, the working group and the pastoral group, that's the Siberian Husky and Border Collie. And here comes our judge for the evening, Paul Erdley. Alongside me, Laura Crombie, who's been exhibiting dogs, of course, since you were school age. Laura, what are we going to see here in the Terry group? I have indeed, and actually so has our judge. He started when he was seven, so even younger than I am. He's been judging since the 70s, um, and he really is a Terrier specialist. So he's had Australian Terriers, Dandy Dinmonts, so really is going to know exactly what he's looking for as our best of breeds start to come in with this Airedale Terrier. The king of the terriers, the largest the of the terrier breeds. Terrier. Thought to have developed from native British terriers taken to Australia by 19th century settlers. The Bedlington Terrier. The distinctive outline there, a lamb-like appearance of the Bedlington Terrier. The Border Terrier. A real worker, the Border Terrier. followed in by the heavyweight terrier. of the Terrier group. This is the Bull Terrier, always really popular with the crowd here. Having a great time as he comes in there. Yeah, well. He should be on the left, but he's the not, it's fine. <laughs> First recognized as a breed in 1943. The so a breed here that's remained remarkably unchanged over the years, this is the Cairn Terrier. Full of attitude there, strutting into the ring. The Chesky Terrier. Chesky is the national dog of the Czech Republic. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Another that's instantly recognisable. This is the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier is the oldest of the Fox Terrier breeds. The Wire Fox Followed Terrier. in by... It's close relation, the Wire Fox Terrier. There were 53 of these here today. The Glen of Imal Terrier. Only 22 Glen of Imal Terriers at Crufts this year. Unfortunately, a lot of the Terriers are in the vulnerable list, um, which means that there are very few the of them registered. Irish terrier. So followed in by the Irish Terrier. The first of the Irish Terriers to receive official recognition when it became a KC breed in 1879. Terrier. And the Kerry Blue. it has been two best in show winners for Kerry Blue breed, 2019-79. Followed in by the Lakeland Terrier, as the name suggests, from the Lake District. The Manchester Terrier. You can guess where the Manchester Terrier originated <laughs> from as well. More of a city than a country dog. The Norfolk Terrier. Now, I love the next two. So this is the Norfolk. And Ali, I'm going to test you on whether you know the difference in a second. <laughs> the Norwich Terrier. This one's got prick ears. It has, <laughs> yes. Very good. I'm impressed. <laughs> You've taught me well. The Parson Russell Terrier. So here we have the Parson Russell Terrier. 82 of them here today. The Scottish Terrier. Now the Scottish Terrier's got such a distinctive outline. Some fans in the crowd here as well. <laughs> the Celian Terrier. Another one that's on the vulnerable list, unfortunately, but here we have the Celian Terrier, a Welsh breed. The Sky Terrier. Long body for the Sky Terrier, the longest. The long the coat, group. long everything, yeah. <laughs> Giving the floor a nice clean on the way through. The soft coated Wheaton Terrier. Here we have that distinctive golden coat of the soft coated Wheaton Terrier. The, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. More than 300 Staffies at Crufts this year. The Welsh Terrier. Compared to just 34 of the Welsh Terrier. The West Highlands White Terrier. 
Most recently, a Best in Show winner in 2016, West Highland White Terrier. I was round the ring earlier, and there's some and lovely the dogs. Us terrier, and the final one is slightly out of order, but the Jack Russell Terrier there. One of the that most recent breeds to be recognised. He's got a lot of fans in the arena as well tonight. Well, the judge here will have a moment to get well, the first look at what is a real variety of dogs that we've just seen across this terrier group. There is. So what links them together is that they were originally bred and used for hunting vermin. So uh, vermin of all kinds, fox, badger, rats, otters. Um, and their name comes from the Latin terra. So they go to earth, it literally means earth. And we'll see some distinct features on a number of these dogs, I mean, which make them fit for purpose. Exactly, yeah. You'll see some very strong jaws. Um, yes, as we go through. And terrier type dogs have been known in the UK since ancient times. So our judge is just considering here how each of these best of breeds compares to the breed standard. So the description of the ideal dog for that specific breed. So it's a difficult job. You're trying to recall the breed standard for that individual, but then you're also comparing them to one another to decide which of them is going to be your representative. You're going to back to go through to best in show on Sunday. Majority of British or Irish through and through. So interesting fact, there's no import register representative in the Terrier group because they are mainly all native breeds, so um, from the UK and from Ireland. And many of them take a fair amount of, of work and trimming, don't they? They do. So actually a lot of them aren't trimmed, they're hand stripped. So you literally pull the coat out by hand. It sounds painful. It isn't painful, I assure you. Sounds like it would take a long time. But it does, and it, you have to keep on top of it every couple of weeks. Right, first dog to be judged in the terrier group. First terrier breed to be seen by Paul Dudley. Comes from Yorkshire, from the Valley of Air and Wolfdale, and was originally known as the Waterside Terrier, later the Bingley Terrier. So here we have the king of the terriers, our best of breed in the Airedales. So this is the largest breed in the terrier group, and it originated in Yorkshire. It was once known as the Waterside Terrier, as it worked the riverbanks helping to tackle vermin, but it's also been used as a tracking and a messenger dog. No, we refer to the Airedale as the king of terriers, it is in this is two-year-old Goldie from Colchester in Essex. And the judges will be looking for a, a straight and level back, short and strong with it. Long, powerful thighs, and those legs should carry straight forward, moving freely. Tail carried high there, that's characteristic of the breed on the move. And I love this here. Apparently wants to be heard and is full of mischief, is how the owner has described Goldie, which is how a terrier should be. You can see that. Look at, look at the face. Got a little cheeky expression Wants to cause some trouble. <laughs> the hard, dense and wiry coat. Soft undercoat. Three-year-old Australian terrier here from Stafford, the Australian terrier, thought to have been developed from native British terriers taken to Australia by settlers in the 19th century. And have that rather distinctive ruff around the neck. So the judge here is looking for a long head with a quite a flat skull, and you can see that silky top knot there. So the neck should be slightly arched and going into a very level top line. Now on the move, I think we can see beautifully here, it should be springy, so powerful, forceful. Obviously it's a small dog, and that tail again held upright. That's something you're going to see on a lot of the terriers. It's characteristic of the group. And it's the smallest breed entry in the group, only 12 here at Crafts today. Wonderfully pricked ears. And next to see by is the Bedlington Terrier. So hailing from the Northumbrian mining town of Bedlington, this is the distinctive outline of the Bedlington Terrier. Now some of the key features are that distinctive arched back and the long head, which gives it a lamb-like appearance. It's excellent at getting rid of vermin, from rabbits to foxes. Its origins are debated, but it's believed to include bull terriers, otterhounds and dandy dimmons. Taking with them terriers, so they cross the global 
Those ears really are distinctive, Laura, aren't they? The, the tassels on them, what do those ears do? Why is that a breed feature? So offering some protection to the end of the ears there. And um, this one is actually a, a big winner. So came group four at Crufts last time we were here in 2020. Three years of age and should have a springing action. And we can see that in the way those legs are lifted and the top line is retained when it's on the move that can really gallop at, at quite a high speed when it gets going. Yes, that's right. It's that distinctive sort of mincing action on this one. And the, the coat is described as linty. And if you touch it, you would, we would be able to know what that means. But they come in blue, liver or sandy variations. This was a super entry today of 233 Just under two years old is the Border Terrier here. Nessa from Derbyshire. It's the second biggest breed entry amongst the Terrier group this year. Over 230 of them. It's a highly adaptable Terrier, a real worker. The breed standard and the breed remains her. So the Border Terrier takes its name from the borders of Scotland and Northumberland, where it was developed as a breed around 1880, and it used to help with driving foxes on hunts uh, by springing out from hiding places. And we talk about being fit for function, the breed standard says this one in its movement should seem as if it has the ability to follow a horse, so it really needs some sound yeah, and some movement for that. it's small, but it can, yes. And also, you should be able to span your, the ribs with, with your hands, which would help it when it was trying to hide un underground. Yeah, it needs some good hind quarters to help get that speed to follow horses. So here we have the heavyweight of the, the Terrier group, the Bull Terrier. Descended from a crossing of Bulldogs and the White English Terrier, they were a fighting dog, bred in 19th century Birmingham. They are, this is a 15-month-old bitch called Shadow, and she hails from Norfolk. Well, that unique feature is that egg-shaped head. A little bit of in interest in that. The carpet, I think, there as you got going. Uh, but that dog yeah, really should have a good thrust from those hind legs. You can see that in the movements. A lot of earlier bull terriers were white, but in the 20s developed some deafness. And then there was some introduction of colour, but we've got a white one here today Just in the shadow. little black marking over the eye there, but yes, it should be strong, muscular, and free and easy on the move, covering the ground with a jaunty air, which I think there, that little cock of the head, you can see that. <laughs> The miniature bull terrier was first recognised as a breed in 1943. Has never won a best in show at Crufts, but the judges will be looking for the same substance and soundness as the bull terrier, but in a smaller frame. Exactly, so that egg-shaped head, we're looking for no hollows or indentations in it, and a short back, a really a deep chest, well-rounded, plenty of lung room, and then we see there the movement, it's quite characteristic, so the legs are moving parallel, but there's a broad chest, so they're moving in that way, and this one, really young, just 11 months old, so won six best puppies in show before, but to make it through to the group at this age, just stopping for a quick sniff, it's really, really, really done well to get here. So here we have a breed that's remained remarkably unchanged through the years. This is the Cairn Terrier. They're a native Scottish breed that were used in the West Highlands and the Isle of Skye to help keep down vermin. And they take their name from Cairns, which are small, rocky outcrops. Cairn Terriers are closer related to the Scottish. As it's there presented on the table, it should stand well forward on its forepaws. I think probably that treat is also helping <laughs> to achieve <laughs> the treat that as well. Helps, but yes. So this is Sid, two and a half years old. So as he goes on the move, we should be able to see that he's agile and alert. So workmanlike little dog. Quite a small head, but uh, broad in the top of the skull. And again, when we talk about the coat, this one should remain and look rugged, shouldn't it? That water it resistance. Should. Exactly. It's all about being weather resistant. These are dogs that will be working outdoors in all conditions. And the judges will be looking for a, fleet, a really free flowing stride here. I mean, short legs, but those yeah, forelegs really reaching well forward and yeah. getting some propulsion from those hind legs as it moves across the, the green carpet. Best of breed Cairn Terrier there.
And now on the table, we see the very distinctive Chesky Terrier. The Chesky Terrier is a really distinctive breed, a mild-mannered dog, but it should still be capable of seeing off vermin, being fit for purpose. It is the national dog of the Czech Republic, and this is two-year-old Nano. It was developed by geneticist Dr. Frantisek Horak, so unlike most of the terriers which we talked about being hand stripped, this one is clipped. So you can see there it's shorter in the back, less rough. And that slight rise to the top line, that's really characteristic of the breed. They should be short legged and rectangular to look at. And the head should look like a blunt long triangle from above. And the breed came about didn't it, as a cross between a Scottish Terrier and a Sealingham. But certainly that dog what you were talking before about the, the grooming, the clipping is much easier to, to handle yes, than hand stripping. Yes, trying to hand strip. Yes, definitely. And you can see characteristics of those two breeds when you look at the Chesky. Mm. And Nano's come all the way from Bologna in Italy. We had one international winner last night, making it through to best in show. I wonder whether we'll have another tonight. And this one a former world winner, so could be in with a chance here today. Zero one. So that wonderful silky top knot here of our best of breed dandy Dinmont Terrier. There were 57 of them here today and they're characterised by a weasel-like body with that slightly curving top line that you'll see. They were developed in Scotland and the border counties. This breed was its name to Sir Walter Scott's novel of 1815, Guy Manor. You know, that body shape is said to be weasel-like, and, and you can see that, can't you, in the, the shape on top of the table there. Now, the name of this dog, the pet name is Hoodwink, three years old, and it said that Hoodwink is a true showman, and that does help in the ring, doesn't it? When the judge is looking for that X factor when it comes to choosing shortlists and indeed winners, He's deciding he's going to own the space there. Exactly. And this, I love that the fact that this is the only breed that has permission to wear a Scottish clan tartan. So if he should wish, he may do that. <laughs> and also, we've got again the ears. Just see it moving there, the little tassels on the end, similar to the Bedlingham. Exactly. And a similar double coat there, so really harsh. You've got soft linty, linty undercoat and then that crisp outer coat. This one moving really nicely. A real feature of the smooth fox terrier is the long head and the short back. It's the oldest of the fox terrier breeds, and this one's 18 months old, named Quickie. That's the pet name, all the way from Aberdare in South Wales. The smooth fox has been called the gentleman of the terrier world. So these dogs should be short-backed, but they should cover the ground as they stand. And you can see that there on the table as this dog's standing. So this is actually 18 months old. Again, another young one. This is a bitch, and she uh, is from South Wales. And she became a champion today. So even if they don't get anything in the group, I think it's been a very successful day. So they're looking here, the judge, for a really flat, smooth, and dense coat. And white is always the predominant color. Good little worker. Um, his hind legs should be carried straight forward and parallel. And Fox Terrier's first shown at Islington in London back in 1862. But then, right, 11 years later, the Birmingham Dog Show had over 250 entries and the first breed standard drawn up in 1876 and the first ever Fox Terrier Club of England was formed. Sadly, numbers have dwindled, so we just had uh, 50 of them here today. So here we have the close relative of the Smooth Fox Terrier. This is the Wire Fox Terrier. Now, they were originally used to drive foxes out of hiding places. So they came in smooth, rough and broken coated varieties. And wires were given separate classes from the 1870s. They should show perfect balance in conformation. And they should be as tall as they are long in their body. And sadly as well, the breed hasn't been as popular now as it used to be, but there are actually more wire-haired terriers here this year than smooth. The number's quite similar. Slightly, yeah, 53 to 50. Yeah. <laughs> the wires have it. So this one, two-year-old bitch, and she's here from Belgium. Looks like she's only done a couple of shows so far. And her name's Spicy. Well, they've got a lot of style and character, so maybe spicy personality and style for our Wire Fox Terrier. There's been three Wire Fox Terriers best in show in the 60s and the 70s. There has, yeah, for the relatively low numbers, they've done very well. So we're looking here, legs moving straight and parallel. 
The Glen of Imal Terrier, only 22 of them at Crufts here this year. And a key feature is quite see there, but those slightly bowed front, bowed front legs, which is said to help them drag up badgers from their set. Again, that sense of being fit for the dogs and the breed's original purpose. And it's said to be a fearless and tenacious breed. So we talked earlier about the powerful jaw, and this is a dog that should have a powerful foreface to grab those badgers and try and drag them out when they found them. There should be a slight rise that we can just see there in the top line, so slightly rising to the loin, and they're covering the ground effortlessly as they move. This is Izzy, four and a half years old from Hereford. It's quite a docile breed, although, as you said, yeah, courageous when it's uh, called into action and needs to be agile. And it keeps pretty silent when it gets into working mode as well. So and another that's become I best of uh, become a champion today with her best of breed. First timer, good to yeah. see. <laughs> so here we have that beautiful colour of the Irish Terrier. So this was the first of the native Irish breeds to become an official breed, and it was registered in 1879. They're known for that bright red coat, but in the early days there were mixed colours. Selective breeding helped to establish them as a key feature of the breed. It's said, Laura, that the colour sometimes gives the breed a reputation of having a, a fiery spirit and a, and a sort of daredevil nature. Is, yes, that, is that true? That's very true, yeah. It's a bit like uh, Ginger Spice was in the Spice Girls. I think that she's the Ginger Spice of the group, but I don't think it's, it's necessarily true. This one looks pretty laid back today. Just wait until we see it in a, a Union Jack jacket at some point. <laughs> but loves human company, a good tempered animal, really. Uh, and can look a bit more, I suppose, much more streamlined than other terriers, but recognised as a pedigree all the way back in 1879. And this is Donny, who is four years old from Staffordshire. And that coat, obviously, we talked about the colour, but it should be really harsh and wiry and feel quite crisp when you touch it. Over a hundred Jack Russell Terriers at Crufts this year. Only recognised by the Kennel Club in 2016. It's a working terrier of great character. It should be really lively, alert and active and the coat can be smooth, broken or rough. So these are mischievous little dogs, but one of the key things that the judge will just have checked is that you can span behind the elbows with two hands, and again, that's to aid it as it would be going underground. So it should be unrestricted and free striding on the move. It's a small dog, but you'll see it should be able to cover the ground really well. And as I said before, the tail on the terriers, this one, should be carried really high and proud. Look at that. Really enjoying personality. I don't think it stopped moving. That neck wants to be really strong and clean and the ability to carry the head proudly, which I think we're seeing there. And long enough to protect the feet, of course, when it would have been working below ground. Another sense of being fit for purpose. Exactly. And although these were originally developed in Australia, they're actually descended from British and Irish terriers that were taken over there by expats to uh, help keep vermin down. And the next breed to be seen by characteristic coat there of the Kerry Blue Terrier Best of Breed winner. So as we've said, the place and origin and the colour of the coat give this breed its name. It was used to cull rats and it's brilliant at hunting in rivers where it was also used to kill otters. First shown in Ireland in 1913 when it was known as the Blue Irish Terrier. Puppies are born black and change to blue when they're about 18 months old. Well, this one's been a Spanish champion. Pet name is Justin, three and a half years old. A really distinctive feature is that long, lean head, and the coat wants to be soft and silky to the touch. Of course, that beard just gives such a, a wonderful characteristic <laughs> expression. in the breeze as he moves round. <laughs> that wonderful head carriage and the, the tail held high and really striding out. This one's moving really nicely. They should be free and powerful, and you can see that one driving there as he moves. And they can be any shade of blue. Uh, they must have some... Uh, they can also have black points on them. That just looks like a, a teddy bear's coat, doesn't it? Velvet. It, yes, yeah. So a lot of the terrier's rough coat. This one, it does feel silky to the touch. The Lakeland Terrier. 
Well, the Lakeland Terrier should have a smart and, and work-like kind of demeanor. It's a very compact and well-balanced dog and a keen expression. This is two-year-old Mac. And the Lakeland, of course, takes its name from the Lake District where it was developed. So the Lakeland Terrier was developed to run after packs of hounds and it would bolt and then it would kill the fox or the badger. So fearless breed and we talked about fearless demeanor, really important. The coat again is a dense and harsh coat, so it's weather resistant. This is a dog that can work outside in all conditions. Its owners say it's a happy, cheeky little dog with playfulness, <laughs> makes them laugh and there is real character there as we watch Max striding out. So we're looking here for drive from behind and you can really see that. Full of personality on the move. The skull should be flat and refined. And again, we talked about the broad, powerful muzzle and why that's so important in the Terriers. We should be able to see that here. Been two Lakeland Terriers to win best in show, 1963 and 1967. So this is Mac making his bid to get through to Sunday's best in show. Selected from an entry of 37. Here we have the smooth, glossy coat of the Manchester Terrier, that characteristic jet black with touches of rich mahogany tan. Unlike many of the Terriers, which were bred to help in country areas, this was bred to help keep down rats during the Industrial Revolution. And the breed standard talks about thumb marks. Just explain what those are, Laura, because that's a very particular characteristic. It does. So if we can get a shot as the dog comes towards us, you can see them there on the front legs. There, can you see the little thumb marks just above the feet on there? So that's a really characteristic feature of the breed. And they were city dogs. Would they still be suitable as city dogs today? Um, I'm not sure there's as much vermin hunting going on in cities today, but well, I you'd think be surprised. With, maybe with enough exercise, I think they would. This is a low maintenance version of a terrier. If you're looking for one, this one doesn't require the stripping. Well, the Norfolk Terrier is the smallest of the terrier breeds, but so big on character and substance as well. The Norfolk Terrier was a best in show winner in 2005. Uh, this is Fizz, who's four years old and from Worksop. And they should be compact with a short back and a level top line, very alert and focused. So this is another breed that should have a hard and wiry coat and you should see the slight eyebrows there and whiskers on the face. It's a small, low and keen dog, but don't let its size fool you. It is very alert and it is also fearless. And of course, the Norfolk Terrier has drop ears. It does, yes, yeah. And this one actually a big winner. So she's won 29 CCs, so 29 challenge certificates. You only need three to be a champion. So it gives you some indication. Big winner, this Norfolk Terrier. See how it goes today. From an entry of 35, this selected this male number 4937 as the best breed. Until this is Normandy, Normandy Rockwell. Took charge of so here we have those pricked ears that we just talked about that separate the Norwich Terrier from the Norfolk. Uh, the two breeds were separated out in 1964. It's the smallest of the Terriers, but don't let that fool you. It should have great substance and character, and those pricked ears give a little sharpness to the expression and its head. This is two-year-old Smoker from Yorkshire. Now, this interested me, Laura, in the, the breed standard because it describes the Norwich Terrier as not a quarrelsome dog, yet it also says that honourable scars from fair wear and tear shouldn't be penalised, which I suggests that. that these ones can hold their own if required. I think it suggests that if the fight comes to them, then they will retaliate, and I think that's fair. So we're looking here on the move for the hind legs should be following in the tracks of the front legs. Clean, flowing through that neck down into a deep, compact body. This really nice example and was the top winning Norwich of last year, unbeaten in his breed. So let's see how he does in the group. And they've got a said to be have a, a real lovely, lovable disposition. I love this breed. Look at that, Molly Pets. Look at it. <laughs> This is four-year-old Taser from Burton on Trent. The parcel oh, Russell Terrier is a small but racy breed and takes its name from a hunting clergyman called Reverend John Russell. And it's an ancestor, this breed, of the rather newer Jack Russell. This one is longer-legged. 
So there were 82 of these here today. Our judge is looking for a wedge-shaped head, almond eyes, and those little V-shaped ears which should drop forward with the tip just level there to the outer eye. And you're talking about those challenge certificates, Laura, 19 of them for yes. Taser. Yeah, so another, another big winner here. And they should be moving free striding and really covering the ground. And again, tail should be up on the move. The coat can come in at three varieties, so it can be rough, broken or smooth. And the colour should be predominantly white. Another one for whom honourable scars are permissible. Yes, yeah, another one who, if a scrap should happen, can stand his own. A bold but friendly nature. Yes, exactly, yes. And next to be seen by Paul Birdley is the Scottish Terrier. The wonderful outline and those fantastic eyebrows here of the Scottish Terrier Best of Breed winner. This is another native Scottish breed that was developed to go to ground after fox, badger and other vermin. They once called the Aberdeen Terrier as they were so prolific in the area. Should be well boned and substantial for its size. You can just see the judge checking that there. First known as the Aberdeen Terrier, where it was developed in the 1800s. Well, this is Zara, four years old and was Best of Breeds Best of Breed at Crufts in 2020 just such a, a wonderful distinctive outline that that long hair the the pricked ears and the strong neck and that coat should be dense and wiry shouldn't it yes another one here that shouldn't feel soft to the touch it should have some wiriness to it and again hand stripped on the back so the skull should be wide and long enough to appear narrow we can see that there in the foreface of this one the whip should be well rounded and a short level back should be held on the move. And Zara's black, but you can also see Scottish Terriers in Wheaton or, or Brindle, and Brindle is the, the tiger-like stripe. Yes, that's right, yes. And that beard and eyebrows we can see there, they're really characteristic of this breed. No trimming there. Today, Judge Jennifer Blair. Well, a Celium Terrier was best in show in 2009 at Crufts, a native Welsh breed, and became a popular breed when it was recognised by the Kennel Club all the way back in 1911. And that general outline should be oblong, but you know, great substance beneath it, a, that long and wiry coat. In village in Pembrokeshire. So this is three-year-old Oliver here from Dublin. It looks like he's won groups at championship shows before and he's described as a real clown. He should be sturdy, game and workman-like. This is a dog that's oblong, so longer than he is tall. And Celium is the name of the village where the breed originated in Pembrokeshire on the River Seal. Great the village vigorous on the move. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the village squire developed the breed, and he lived in Sealingham Manor. It's a bit of a nod to himself. Yeah. That is the best Why not? I might have a Crombie breed I'm going to develop. <laughs> and now we move on to the Sky Terrier. This was another breed judged today by Dan Eriksson from Sweden. And from an entry of 51. Here we have the wonderful coat and those fantastic ears of the Sky Terrier best of breed. These were one of the original terriers of the Scottish Hebrides and played a part in the development of all Scottish terriers. Used to hunt fox and badger, there were 51 of them here today. And this one is a seven-year-old dog called Eddie, so actually a veteran. Well, you might recognise this breed as Greyfriars Bobby, you know, the dog that returned to the grave of its owner for some 14 years. And that just goes to show, really demonstrates the loyalty and the, the devotedness of uh, the Sky Terrier breed. But that long coat, it's important that it's straight and it's flat, but it shouldn't ever impede the action. So, Laura, very important to to get the trim just right in terms of the length. And also really important for the, the judge to get their hands on the dog so they can feel underneath that coat. The coat should be like a veil that's coming over. And you can see here, we're looking for propulsion, it covering the ground well. And despite having the veil over its eyes, the dog can see where it's going, does know what it's doing. They should be long, powerful, close to the floor, but as you said, not so close that it impedes their movement. This one looks wonderful today. We're flat, straight, top line and elongated in the body. Not looking seven years old at all. Previous winner here at Crufts and also a European winner. And those ears, prick, they can be dropped as well. We've seen a seven-year-old. Here is a nine-year-old dog, Jack, soft-coated Wheaton Terrier from Wiltshire. And the coat's a real key characteristic of uh, this breed, which is an Irish native, soft and silky, 
loosely waved or curly, but those curlies should be large and loose. So this dog's believed to be an ancestor of both the Irish and the Kerry Blue Terriers, which we've seen in the group. They were used for hunting both badgers and otter. The colour is described as a shade of ripening wheat. So you can have a full spectrum from lighter through to darker. They should stand four square with the head and tail up and the tail there carried over the back on the move. Yeah, very upstanding and compact breed and the judge will be looking for strong and muscular thighs there and we really saw propulsion across the floor, swiftness of movement and that just really propels soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Here we have our best of breed Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the biggest entry in the Terrier group today with 306 of them here. It's a popular breed, it shares common ancestry with the Bull Terrier and it was a fighting dog that was created by crossing a Bulldog and the Black and Tan Terrier. They selected this male, number 5285 as their best of breed. I love the name of this dog. This is Batman, <laughs> two years old and 11 months. I notice the leather collar. It's the only breed shown in a collar, isn't it? And, it? and it's decorated with brass emblems, which carry the Staffordshire knot, which is the traditional symbol of the county. So there's some, yeah, very, a few breeds that... Yeah, we've got the tartan, we've got the special collar. Yes, exactly. Where does exactly. that come from? I, I don't know is the answer. I don't know where it comes from, but yeah, they are shown, as you can see there smiling face you can see that it looks like it's grinning as it comes towards us so this is a black they come in various colors judge today sonia connell judge 34 of them is sent through to the group this evening this bitch number five five now this is a female etna is uh, our Welsh Terrier. There's been four Welsh Terriers to have won best in show in the history of Crufts. And the Welsh, an all-round hunt Terrier, affectionate and obedient. And those V-shaped ears are a real feature, a strong jaw, and the feet should be small and cat-like. So these are once known as the black, the Welsh Black and Tan Rough-Coated Terrier, and the name was later compressed to the Welsh Terrier, which I think we'll all agree is a little easier to say, but it tells you about the coat. It should be hard and wiry to touch. It should be a workman-like little dog with a flat skull and another one with a punishing jaw there, designed to, to get the vermin and not let go. So this one's from Hungary, big winner over there, champion. Um, yeah, all sorts of best of breeds and group placements over there. Etna says have a lovely temperament, very friendly, loves the shows and seems very, very at home, very much at home in the Crufts main arena. Here we have the last dog in the group, the crisp white coat of the West Highland White Terrier. They were developed from a white strain of the Cairn Terrier in the middle of the 19th century, and the reason the colour was easier to see when they were working on the moors. So this is Freddie, who has travelled over from Poland, five, five and a half years old likes to snack on cheese while he's in the ring. Um, well, I think we all like that, so... <laughs> oh, yes, so I was expecting you to bring a little <laughs> snack bag up here, to be honest. But that skull slightly domed, the eyes set wide apart and set under heavy eyebrows there as well, but it gives it a really intelligent, piercing sort of expression. And the last time a West Highland White Terrier won best in show was only as recently as 2016. It was, and the head appeared described as a white chrysanthemum. That's what that feathering should be creating, that kind of illusion of a flower as you look at it. And this is another breed that's, that's stripped out by hand, so high maintenance coat if you want to show it, but obviously it can be clipped. Here in the group ring, whilst our judge, Paul Early, takes a final look at the group in its entirety. So our judge has taken a look at all of the best of breeds in the Terrier group, but who is going to make it through to the shortlist? It's no mean achievement. There was a total of 1,875 terriers entered today. Well, we've seen all the breeds in the terrier group. Is there any, Laura, that you particularly 
liked? Oh, I think, I mean, look at that little Jack Russell. It, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? There's some really nice examples. The Westie, I think, looks great there at the end. I do have a soft spot for both the Norfolk and the Norwich Terriers. I think they're both really lovely examples. Well, we'll expect uh, our judge to draw out a short list, usually eight. We saw nine in one of the short lists. We did. You can never rely night. on them to stick to the eight, <laughs> no. <laughs> So he's just going round now, just one more opportunity to take a look at the breed type, the balance, but also the showmanship. And I mean, you can see there, look at that tail. Pick me, pick Yeah, exactly, yeah. If they, if they can pull it out of the bag, now's the moment to do it. Does it matter really if the dog is standing stock still or if there is movement at this stage? I think it depends on the breed. So you'll see some of them are stacked. So the, the owner is holding them in position um, and you would expect those to stay relatively still. But the ones that are free stood, so where the handler is holding perhaps a treat or just catching their attention, it's very normal for them to move. And obviously terriers are sprightly. They want to be moving. So I don't think they're going to get marked down for that. Paul Erdley, our judge taking his time and making sure he works his way around all the terriers before deciding on his shortlist. That coat there of that Sky Terrier, immaculate. The Staffy, always popular. Now, when will he start choosing? It looks like out? he's taking his time, looking back again. Let's see where he's going to go. We've already had the working group and the pastoral group. Those winners going through to best in show. Siberian Husky and Border Collie. So the Bedlington Terrier there is coming out. Beautiful distinctive outline. Closely followed by the smooth Fox Terrier. And the wire. So we've got both of those coming out. The Irish Terrier. And then we've got the Irish Terrier. The Kerry Blue Terrier. The Kerry Blue, which was looking lovely today. The Lakeland Terrier. The Lakeland. Where are we going now? The Parson Russell Terrier. We've got the Parson Russell the and the little Scotty and coming out. Our short list. And the Sky. So, as our other Terrier best of to leave the main ring, can I ask you to show your appreciation and congratulate them? On their success here We've at got the another short list of nine. We have, my reckoning. So, judge is going to take them back, move them again. That's our short list. I'll tell you best of these. Move to the back of the ring. Call them out of the front line. So, just using the opportunity and now to have one last look at how they move the out. Place. So first in our shortlist, we have so the, the, the Lamlight the Bedlington, Bedlington Terrier. Terrier. So we talked about this one. It's already won Group 4 here at Crufts in 2020. So can it go one better today? This three-year-old dog called Chase here from Ayrshire. So again, the judge just the taking the time to look at the movement, Terrier. looking for that reach and drive there, that beautiful rise in the top line. And Chase won best of breed out of 93 Bedlingtons at Crufts this year. And the next dog we see moving is the Smooth Fox Terrier. Sent through to the group by the Patricia Smooth Fox Brew. Terrier, 18 month old quickie. Eight. This is. And I've really seen that tail wanging away from the get go. So this should have clean outline. Off she goes. Tail carried high. The smooth Fox Terrier. Full of personality on the move. Again, predominantly white. Now, off goes the Wire Fox Terrier. And we also have the Wire Fox Terrier. So both the Fox Terriers making the shortlist here today. This one is a two-year-old bitch. It's called Spicy. Here from Belgium to compete. Four, five, four, nine, as best of breed. As we had a Hungarian winner last night. We did, yes. Yeah, so we could have show. another overseas winner here. So, as we said, Terriers, predominantly British and Irish breeds. But it's nice to see popular on the continent. This smart little dog covering the ground, still alert, look, full of vigour. Our shortlist is the Irish Terrier. So, the Irish Terrier making the shortlist here. 
four, six, that red two, colour. One. This one is four-year-old. Donny the dog, and he's from Staffordshire. And a champion dog already. Yeah, he's won some group placings at other championship shows outside of Clufts. And his owners describe, describe him as playful and extremely loyal. And around he goes. Asked to move out again Irish once Terrier, more. Best of breed winner. Number four, six, what will the judge be looking two, for in the movements of the Irish Terrier? Well, it already will have decided that this terrier meets the breed standard, but it's about, is it a showman? Is On this the, the one that's going to really represent the terrier group I'm in best in show? Is this is, of course, when you're comparing different different, different breeds to each other all of a sudden. So this, the Kerry Blue Terrier. One of our endangered, sadly, breeds on the vulnerable breeds list. This one's Justin, a three-and-a-half-year-old dog here from Scotland. He's a Spanish champion, and he was uh, made up last year, so became a champion last year in the UK. He's a clown, always wanting to play, but he's behaving very well here. And Look at that drive from the rear there. Is the best of breed winning Lakeland Terrier. The Lakeland Terrier. Sent through to the group this evening by Two time best Andrews. in show, this breed, this dog, both in the 60s. Three. This is two-year-old Mac. So put through by Zena Thorne Andrews, a really well-respected breed judge. Another... International entry yeah, this from Croatia. Croatia. Yeah. Multiple best in show winner previously. And it's described as a happy, cheeky little dog. So these terriers really are full of character. It's the Lakeland Terrier. And now off goes our Parson Russell Terrier. So here we have the Parson Russell Terrier. This is a four-year-old dog called Taser, here from Burton-on-Trent. Now, he was the top Parson Russell in both 2019 and last year, and he has won 19 challenge certificates. So we said three to become a champion, so if you're getting towards 20, you're doing pretty well. Taser knows what it takes to win, that's for sure, and the tail hasn't stopped wagging. Is he going to knock out the competition? Do you see what I did there? Taser. No. <laughs> I, I, I deliberately missed it. <laughs> so these smaller dogs really striding around the ring, just taking their time. Oh, stopping to have a quick look. I think our little Scotty just started uh, a little bit soon there. So this is our Scottish Terrier, native Scottish breed. This one, four-year-old bitch called Zara. And another overseas entrant here from Finland and was best of breed at Crufts in 2020. Again, and really distinctive outline, that, that solid body, and it's a dog bred to go to ground. Well, you like this one. I do. Look at that coat. I mean, you call it a veil, but that is high maintenance. This is the Sky Terrier, seven years old, still going brilliantly, just showing the longevity of these terrier breeds. This is a dog called Eddie, here from the Czech Republic. Another who's won here at Crufts before. So we're looking for a dog that, although it's low to the ground, can still really cover the ground well, and that's what this one's doing. And when the breed has those prick ears, they should be really gracefully feathered, which I think we've seen. You can see that, especially when they're on the move, and you can see the coat moving like that. I think that's a lovely dog. All our nine shortlisted terrier best of breeds. Another quick look along Well, that is the shortlist. Now time for the judge to decide. Who will so be the winner of the Terrier group? There will be four chosen to come out to the middle, the top four. Group, what do you think, Ali? This is your first is year. Is there anything there that catches your eye? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person <laughs> for an expert view. I'll let the judge decide. I think that smooth Fox Terrier looks beautiful there. And obviously the Bedlington we know has won a prep place in the group before. So... Not wasting any opportunity to have one last this look. Very thorough, but the boards are there. So who's going to take group Terrier one? Group Where's he going? Ah, the it's Irish the Terrier. Irish Terrier. Beautiful red coat of our Irish Terrier. This is Donny, the dog, four years old, here from Staffordshire, so just down the road. Second place is going to the Lakeland Terrier. So this two-year-old Mac, a dog, and this one from Croatia. Well worth the journey to get here today. So group three, where are we going to go? Looks like... So the Bedlington is moving one space up. <laughs> so in four years' time, could well take the group. So this is our Bedlington Terrier, three-year-old Chase, here from Ayrshire. So we've got one spot left. Terrier group four is... Oh, it's that, I'm delighted. I think that's terrier. a lovely Sky Five Terrier. One, six, this is Eddie, seven-year-old dog, 
doing it for the veterans here from the Czech Republic. Well, these are our top four then in the Terrier group, and we have our winner going through to best in show on Sunday night, and that is Donny, the four-year-old Irish Terrier from Staffordshire. So let's have a word with John. You are as cool as a cucumber out there. I don't feel it. <laughs> Just if you wouldn't mind turning a little bit to face your audience up here. Thank you so much. John, tell us a little bit about this dog here. Well, he was bred by uh, some great friends of mine, uh, Brian and Beryl Blower. Sadly, Brian passed away quite recently. So what an honor. This dog has done particularly well, hasn't he, in the last sort of uh, six to nine months? Yes, uh, he was Group 2 at the last show at Manchester and he won the group at Boston, so, yeah, happy days. So just tell us a little bit about this breed and why they, they do make great show dogs as well. Yeah, he's a hard Irishman, red-headed Irishman. They're uh, just a brilliant breed to have around you. A bit like you, then? <laughs> uh, less of the hair, but, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to John, the winner of the Terrier Group. Well, that and was a lovely story to be shared just then, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, a huge congratulations. And Donny goes through alongside Lenore, the Border Collie, who won the Pastoral Group, and Akila, who was the Siberian Husky, who won the Working Group. And no Irish Terrier has ever won Best in Show at Cruft, so that is a contender. Could be a first. It's a little Lakeland there in second, Bedlington in third, and our wonderful Sky Terrier in fourth. Thank you. Very, very that. proud moment, and probably a little bit of an emotional one as well. Have I done all right, Dad? That's Something's coming out of my pocket. What's yeah. in the pocket? <laughs> Look. A worthy winner of the Terrier Group. Congratulations to Donnie.